Welcome back, sports fans and audiophiles. We've got a new product in for review today, and I'm going to describe it for you a little bit, and then I will install it. And in a subsequent video, I'll talk about what I learned in terms of our listening tests. But this is a product that needs some explanation because you probably or possibly aren't aware of the difference that this potentially could make to your sound quality. For those of you who've been around for a while, you'll remember back in the day where turntables were the primary source that we used. There was a lot of thinking about how once you got distortion into the system at the turntable level, there was no getting rid of it. That led to a movement that said sources are really important. Now, if you fast forward to a time where streaming is a primary source of our audio signals, well, we have to think about where the stream comes from and basically it comes from the internet. So what we have today is the English electric eight switch. And it is a internet switch, which you all probably have in your system, whether you know it or not. So this comes in the signal path after the modem, which takes the signal from the outside world. And this divides the digital signal up to go to the various endpoints that you have one of those likely to be a streamer. And from the streamer, you go to a DAC, and from the DAC, you go to a preamp, amp, speakers, and you're kind of back in the conventional world that many of us know and love. Anyway, the English Electric 8 switch is an unassuming little box. I'll get my hand in the picture here so you get an idea of it being relatively small. It's got some nifty little feet on it. And then on the back is the business end of the operation where you have DC in on the right, the input that comes from your uh, modem and seven ports. So you can send digital signals to various places in your home. One of those will probably go to your streamer and you could say that's the most important one, but fundamentally, you're probably going to have one of these boxes. And the question is, does it make any difference? And does it actually need to be good? So to understand why it might matter, I'm not going to proclaim that it, proclaim that it does matter until we get down to some listening tests. But there is some real logic here. Fundamentally, we're dealing with digital signals. And uh, digital signals have several interesting properties. The first that I'd like to talk about is the fact that timing in digital signals is very important. If you do a little bit of study on how digital signals work, the element that we typically think of as frequency is to some degree embodied in the spacing or the timing of the zeros and ones that make up the digital signal. Therefore, timing is very important and uh, digital signals are bedeviled by something called jitter, which is variation in timing relative to what the reference would want it to be. So if you change the timing of a digital signal, you tend to change the ultimate analog signal that's recreated at the end, and that's somewhat obviously, I would say, a bad thing. So what English Electric has done here is they've created an audiophile grade ethernet switch and elements that they've incorporated in here to make it somewhat special are first, uh, temperature controlled and compensated crystal oscillators. So the oscillators are what determine the timing of the uh, fundamental signals in the switch. 
and you want them temperature compensated because obviously temperatures vary in your home and temperatures vary inside the box as it's being used and heated up and so on. So they use a customized temperature compensated crystal oscillator with an accuracy of one tenth of a part per million or one part per 10 million, which they claim is significantly more accurate, lower uh, timing distortion than normal crystals and even higher than normal temperature controlled crystal oscillators. As you might imagine, if you've ever bought a regular internet switch at your local electronics store, switches are not expensive devices. And so uh, there's a lot of effort put into making them as low cost as possible. And uh, things like temperature compensation of the oscillators can easily be skipped over. Uh, the other piece that they've done is they've done some significant electrical noise isolation in the power supply and clock generation circuits to stabilize the network signals. It's kind of obvious that if you overlay noise on a digital signal, you might affect what its ultimate values are. And so we want to eliminate noise. The ultimate claim they make is that the eight switch reduces jitter by about 90% compared to a conventional off the shelf box stock, just, you know, consumer grade computer switch. Um, they also have spent a little bit of time on this guy, which I will put up here. That is the Walwart style power supply. It doesn't look like anything special. The main point that they make about it is that they did not use, not use a linear power supply because they claim that a linear power supply is not fast enough for the data rates that go through an ethernet switch. Uh, I want to recommend also a source if you're really interested in why switches can matter. And I would say even if you're generally interested in uh, the reasons that digital signals can become distorted, even though they seem to have this really clean property of uh, zeros and ones, and it sounds really simple, and it seems like, well, that's a zero or a one, and that's all there is, but that is not all there is, as with most things in audio. So I mentioned before that timing differences, or what we call jitter, uh, are the source of distortions in digital signals. And let me just read a little bit of the white paper we'll reference in the show notes here. Uh, this was written by John Swenson, who's a designer for Uptone Audio. Uh, and Uptone Audio also makes Ethernet switches, which we have highly reviewed a little bit more expensive than the English Electric and currently being redesigned due to sourcing issues with some of the devices, fancy devices that they used. But anyway, let me just give you a little bit from John Swenson because he has a really great description that goes on at length and I can't recommend this white paper enough. All right. So where does jitter come from? All oscillators have jitter, some more, some less. We classify this jitter component as source intrinsic jitter. A jit additional jitter can be added to this at the receiver of the clock, which is typically a flip-flop inside the DAC. The flip-flop has its own intrinsic jitter, which is called receiver intrinsic jitter. And then there's a third class called threshold jitter. Even though, here's the really critical part, we tend to think of digital signals as being binary with just two possible states, a one and a zero, or high and low, changing instantaneously between them, that's actually not what happens. The signal is an analog voltage. When going from a high to a low state, it hits all the intervening voltages 
and the change takes a finite interval of time. This is called ramp time, the time it takes to ramp up from 0 to 1 or ramp down from 1 to 0. This time interval can be very fast, but it is not 0. A common ramp time found in most digital audio circuits is several nanoseconds. Since a nanosecond is a billionth of a second, and that sounds fast, uh, you might think it doesn't matter, but in the realm we're talking about, a billionth of a second is not really that fast. This is important because every circuit receiving a clock signal has a threshold voltage. The threshold voltage is the voltage at which the clock changes from thinking the signal is a zero to thinking the signal is a one or vice versa. So what happens when the threshold voltage changes? Think of a line going from left up, from left to right, with a threshold at say two volts. Whenever the signal gets above two volts, the circuit sees it as going from zero to one. But what if the threshold changes from 2 volts to 2.1 volts. The signal takes a little while longer to get to 2.1 volts than it takes to get to 2 volts, so the time it takes the circuit to see the change to a 1 increases slightly. That's jitter, and that jitter changes ultimately what the DAC sees and how the DAC converts the signal back to analog. There's a lot more in this paper. Again, we'll reference it in the show notes. There's a lot more in this paper about how these uh, jitter elements turn into distortions in the ultimate process of going from digital signal in to analog signal out. But suffice it to say, there is good technical reason to believe that jitter or timing errors matter in the ultimate recreation of the analog signal. Hence, we care about how we start and how much jitter we start with. And that's why we're interested in products like this English Electric 8 switch, which I plan to install at the very beginning of my chain from the modem that's connected to the outside world up to my listening room and into my streamer and DAC. So we'll be back with more, some listening impressions and so on, but I wanted to kick this off with a look at the English Electric 8 switch and some discussion of why we bother. Nifty little lights on the front so you can tell what's plugged in if you need to, but it's a simple black box for the most part. All right, we'll be back in probably a couple weeks with some listening comments and further thoughts on these ideas. Hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can receive notification of other videos that we're doing. And I think we've got some exciting stuff coming down the pike. And we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.